via telephone, City Councilman Jason Baker. Jason, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you? Excellent. Thank you. Appreciate you making the call in today. Hey, uh, your thoughts? Mark Baldwin announced his retirement earlier this week as city manager, the longest tenured city manager in Martinsburg's history, and that is effective, I believe, at the uh, at some point in October. Yeah, the end. I think twenty sixth or twenty seventh is the uh, is the day. So um, good for him. Um, great, you know, he's earned being able to retire and uh, um, spend the time with his. Uh, his kids and uh, his wife and his grandkids um, and uh, enjoy uh, his life. He's given uh, most of his adult life to the city of Martinsburg. And um, even if I've disagreed with him over my tenure on council, um, you, uh, he is an excellent city manager um, and has, uh, has, has done unbelievable things and, there's not enough time left in your show to talk about everything that he's done in, in his uh, his time in the city of Martinsburg, but um, we aren't the city that we are today without him. Well, I know the two of you do not always see eye to eye on uh, on things, so I, I appreciate you pointing out the uh, the good things that the man accomplished. Yeah, absolutely, it, and, and it was never. It was always uh, when we disagreed, um, and I have a lot of respect for him for this. Um, we walked away. The next time we came back, we normally would uh, have a little conversation if it got heated, and and we moved on and uh, for the for the betterment of the city and for the betterment of every resident in the city. So um, that's another just you know awesome um, a, a ability for uh, for him to do that. Will city council be involved in hiring his replacement, or is that handled Absolutely. at a different level? All right. How will that nope. process work, Jason? Well, he's been there so long. I, it, I'm guessing we will do. We'll have interviews. Um, it's. It is definitely. It is our as a council. It is our top appointment. Um, it'll be solely the city council's decision, um, and who the next uh, city manager will be. Um, obviously, we have an assistant um, city manager and Andy Blake who. Um, has been a city uh, manager in Ranson, um, has been with the city, um, worked for the county, you know, and, uh, and uh, he's, uh, he's been doing a lot of uh, the work in, in the day-to-day -day stuff um, under Baldwin for, you know, for the past year or so. Um, so, uh, um, you know, I know that I'm sure – I haven't talked to him directly, but I'm sure that uh, he will have uh, an application in for the job, and and uh, and we'll see where it where it comes from there. And is there, or will there be any consideration given to an idea proposed by Dan Delier when he was running for mayor several years ago to switch the power structure of city government to a strong mayor instead of a weak mayor, strong city manager system? So that's a charter change, um, and uh, of course that would not happen during this change. You know, we we couldn't do that for the next city manager. Um, what, we would have to charter change, and then we, with a charter, if it's not unanimous, um, it would actually have to go out for the people to vote um, on that to switch to that. Um, and I I've always been one. You, you get frustrated um, sometimes, you know, with, especially with the city manager has been there so long. You get frustrated because you come in um, as a council and you, and you got new ideas and you get flustered. And there's a, I think there's a good balance in between. Um, you need a, you need a city manager that has some tenure that you know, has went through some of those things, you know, different um, changes that have happened and can give you that history. Um, but that, to answer your question directly, that would actually take a charter change, which would be, we would have to recommend it. Um, it would have to be, it would be unanimous. It could, we could switch it. Um, it would not be unanimous vote. Um, so it would have to go to the, to the uh, next city election. 
You also are bringing in a new police chief in Aaron Gibbons as George Whitwood has retired from that position. <laughs> Absolutely. We're, we've had a lot of change. We're having a lot of change this, uh, in this year. Um, once again, I, I, uh, I can't say enough um, good things about uh, George Swartwood. Um, I, I was giving him a hard time a couple weeks ago, and uh, that he has been with the city for as, almost as long as I've been alive. Um, so, you know, that, that's a lot of dedication. Um, and, uh, you know, all, we thank him for his service. Um, and I hope he enjoys his retirement and the rest of his life. Um, he's earned that. Um, excited for Chief Gibbons. Um, I think that uh, he's uh, very eager to uh, to be in charge and, and to implement uh, his ideas and and uh, and I think we will see a. Uh, I think we, I think the the public and definitely the city council and and the people paying attention. I think we're definitely going to see a uh, um, a difference. Um, not saying that George was uh, anything, you know, but anytime you get a change and you know it's another uh, hire within, um, and I think that that's uh, exciting. And I'm I'm excited for uh, Chief Gibbons to uh, to to get going and. Uh, and uh, for, for the city. Earlier this week, we had discussion about the cancellation of summer basketball for Parks and Rec and the issues with Lambert Poole, Jason. And I know Lambert Poole is of importance to you. Uh, and I'm sure you've heard some of the complaints about the lack of summer basketball now through Parks and Rec. I know the city contributes to Parks and Rec. Do you have any concerns right now regarding both of those issues? Oh, I have lots of concerns. <laughs> I'm glad you gave me the easy stuff to start me out. You know, you warmed me up nicely. That's what, that's I, what I do. That. Don't don't try hosting a show at home. I, I'm a professional. Don't try this on your I, own. I appreciate that. Um, the basketball, there, there's there's been some issues with with coaching. There's been it, with coaches. There's been some issues with um, people. There in courts. Um, to, that I. I They've done it for a while, and I, I believe that we'll get better. There, there's some things that I'm not happy with um, that I've, I've talked to a couple members on the rec board um, about my concerns on that. But my big one, um, Lamberpool. Um, as you know, no one has, as far as um, elected, has pushed harder to keep Lamberpool open um, and cares more than I have in my tenure. Um, you know, I, you, you, there's, with social media, everybody has an opinion. Everybody likes, to, you know, that they don't have to worry about facts. And, you know, they, they opened the pool this year. I know that you had the director on a couple days ago, um, and he kind of went through some of that. But I'm going to, you know, brief in, some, in that a little bit. But, you know, they did what they normally do. And the pool is old. Um, we all knew the pool was old. It, you know, it's it's 40 plus years old. And a new commercial pool, life expectancy, I understand, is is somewhere between probably 15 and 25 years. And it's it, hopefully they can they can get a miracle. Um, and get the clogs so they can get the pump situated and, and get the flow right. And we can see um, the, uh, the operation of Lambert this year. I, I, I uh, commend um, the Parks and Rec. You know, they were proactive. They, I think they've done an awesome job of communicating. Um, I know that that has been a little bit of an issue, in, you know, in the last year. But I think as far as the pool is concerned, they've done a nice job. And, uh, you know, that also, and I, I would challenge other people that when you see the post from Parks and Rec or you see it from the city of Martinsburg, um, share that information. Not everybody is, is friends or, or follows Parks and Rec. If you're not following them, follow them. They're doing a much better job of getting that information out. Um, you know, Lambert, 
you know, being closed right now. They they went back to War Memorial. They've lowered the rates so that they match Lambert. Um, they've worked with the uh, Pantran to, you know, free shuttle, you know, free Pantran to the pool. Um, you can pick those tickets up at, their, at the office at the 2000 Rec Center so that these kids can at least get to the pool while, while they're hopefully – can get the pool back in operations um but this this is where it is we if they get it back that's great but at this point i think that as a as as a councilman that i speak for myself um it's time for a replacement um it 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 is that time if we get it this year that's fine if we don't then it doesn't change but I we need to replace the pool. Um, that that could be a replacement of pool of an indoor. That could be a splash park, which I know has been proposed. Um, we're going to have water at Lambert as long as I'm a city councilman. Um, <laughs> I will fight it to, to tooth and nail. Um, but it, we need a replacement, um, and I uh, I hope that uh, the rest of my council um, will support me on that. I, I believe they will, um, and I think there, you know, it might be some buy-in from the county also, and uh, so that we can get a new facility at Lambert, um, so that it, you know, that it will last. John Gilstrap. Uh, good morning. I, I want to get back to um, our new police chief, uh, Chief Gibbons. <clears throat> Excuse me. When he was in studio a couple of days ago, he was talking about some or. Not specifically, but implying that there are cultural changes that need to come within the rank and file of the police department. Um, how involved is the city council on uh, defining those metrics, or for that matter, in the recruitment effort to backfill the quite a few empty positions within the police force? So we so um, we make policy is what we do as a council. So um, you know we take recommendations from our chief. Um, of, of what he thinks will work, and and I and I think that culturally, as far as the um, the police department, we need that's the chief. Um, if the culture isn't what we want to see, then that's when the city manager and the the, the city council. Um, need to put the guidance of, of what we need. And if that's a policy change, if that's a new ordinance, um, if that's a, you know, a, um, you know, a, the handbook and, and our uh, employees um, of what, what we want to see, then, then that's something that we need to do in a policy. And then obviously we, ex you know, but no, no matter what department we're in, we would expect that the, uh, the leaders of those departments are, are doing the policies that the city of Martinsburg council has, uh, has put in place. Were there in the hiring process or the, the vetting process for the new chief, were there, uh, individual milestones that deal with, well, either crime statistics or with internal council, uh, um, the, the, the internal cultural issues, when I say cold, you know, the, the cop culture, uh, which isn't a bad thing necessarily. It just is what it is. Did the, the council lay out uh, milestones that the new candidate, in this case, the, the, the chief, would meet? Um, I'm not going to speak. I wasn't in the, in the, the interview process. They, we did it through the uh, mayor and the city manager um, and our HR. Um, but I could talk for myself. I can't speak for any other councilman. Um, I did take my time, and I spoke with um, – Mark Baldwin, I spoke with uh, Andy Blake, and I talked talk to Kevin Knowles about what I was hoping to see in the, in the police chief um, and the questions and the answers that we need to see um, for, you know, to be moving forward. Um, I can tell you that this is my third police chief under my tenure. And um, or fourth technically, but three that we've hired, um, and we there's there's always room for improvement, and 
I think that I think we'll see a major change. <laughs> okay, Matt Harvey. Good morning, Councilman. Uh, I, I would like to congratulate you on the selection. Or congratulate the city on the selection of Aaron Gibbons as next chief. I know there was a lot of really good qualified and and candidates that would have done an excellent job. But uh, I, I certainly know an Aaron. I, I, I think he's going to be everything that that you're expecting, and and you know that, and I know that. Um, yeah. So Martinsburg has done an incredible job in transforming itself, but but it hasn't hit that tipping point where it's you know where it's a total makeover. Is there something that's holding that up, or is there something that you can do as a councilman that can help encourage that? Well, I, I think there. I'm guessing that we're talking more economically and and the and the beautification of the city. Is is it might. Is that your? That's basically your question. Yes, there's there's been a, there's a lot of attraction of new businesses and and money spent in remaking Martinsburg. It's really well, good, good track. So, yeah, I think I think there is things, and I think that where the council has done a lot of it. Um, you know, we we were very proactive in interwoven mill. Um, that is going to be a project that is multi-year that is going to make a huge impact. Um, in the core of our city. Um, and we need to do our parts. And a lot of times, um, not to be a broken record, but, you know, a lot of times it's, it's, it's just changing policies, changing um, ordinances slightly so that we can attract the businesses that we want and, and to promote those businesses. You know, the new, um, the garage, there at the um, old uh, um, on the corner of Raleigh and King, um, you know, we we had to alter an ordinance a little bit so that it, everything worked. It was easy, um, you know. It, it's those things that I think that the council has done a really good job, especially in the last probably four or five years of being very proactive with that and 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 working through that. There's been multiple things with Paramount. You know, they meet with the city, um, I think it's weekly, if not, I think, I'm pretty sure it's every week, if not every two weeks, um, you know, to, to discuss any issues. Hey, hey Jason, um, I've got to jump in because I got to uh, get into my final commercial break here, man. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll have to pick this up again next time you're on, okay? Absolutely. You have a great day. Thank you. You too.